Israeli strike kills seven workers. The Associated Press is reporting that an international charity suspended delivery of food to starving Palestinians on today, a day after an Israeli airstrike killed seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen who were trying to ease the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Ships still laden with some 240 tons of aid from the charity that arrived on Monday turned back from Gaza, according to uh, sources, which has played a key role in trying to establish a sea route to bring food to the territory. Israel has allowed only a trickle of aid into the devastated northern Gaza, uh, where experts say famine is imminent. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu acknowledged that the country's forces had carried out the, quote, unintended strike on innocent people. He said officials were looking into the strike and would work to ensure that it did not happen again. World Central Kitchen said it had coordinated with the Israeli military over movements of the cars carrying the workers as they left northern Gaza late Monday. Footage of the aftermath showed a vehicle with the charity's logo printed across its roof to make it identifiable from the air. The projectile punched a large hole through the roof. Two other vehicles in the convoy were incinerated and mangled, uh, indicating multiple hits. And so uh, for folks that are less familiar with World Central Kitchen, Jose Andres uh, is uh, their founder and um, um, has set up these central kitchen locations to provide humanitarian aid where disaster strikes here in the United States and around the world. And so uh, this is not uh, uh, welcomed news for uh, a lot of folks that are in the business of providing humanitarian aid in Gaza uh, and in other uh, sort of war-torn areas. And so uh, we'll continue to keep our eye on that. Uh, but uh, back here in the United States, uh, the Associated Press is also reporting that hospitals must obtain written consent for pelvic and similar exams, uh, hospitals must obtain that written informed consent from patients before subjecting them to pelvic exams and exams of other sensitive areas, especially if an exam will be done while the patient is unconscious. Unconscious. Uh, new guidance from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services now requires consent for breast, pelvic, prostate, and rectal exams for, quote, educational and training purposes performed by medical students, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. The department's release said that guidance was issued to reiterate and provide clarity regarding hospital consent requirements. Federal regulations previously mentioned uh, obtaining consent for important tasks related to surgeries and do not provide the level of detail about medical students. So hopefully this clarifies something. I know that, uh, that so many uh, folks... Uh, you know, uh, frequent hospitals to, to get the care that they need. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are people that just don't feel comfortable uh, being unconscious, unconscious because they're afraid that uh, uh, somebody might take advantage of them. And so hopefully this eases uh, some of that anxiety moving forward. Uh, the AP is also reporting that uh, a second channel has opened, allowing some vessels to bypass wreckage at the Baltimore Bridge collapse site. Uh, crews opened a second temporary channel just today, allowing a limited amount of marine traffic to bypass the wreckage of Baltimore's collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge, which has uh, been blocked. In fact, it's blocked the vital port's main shipping channel since its destruction one week ago. Uh, work is ongoing to open a third channel that will allow larger vessels to pass through the bottleneck. Uh, that's what officials are saying. Uh, the channels are primarily open uh, to vessels that are helping with the cleanup effort, along with some barges and tugs that have been st uh, stuck in the port of Baltimore. A, tugbo a tugboat pushing a fuel barge was the first vessel to use an alternate channel late Monday was supplying jet fuel to Delaware's Dover Air Force Base. And so this is a very important port uh, operating uh, uh, on the East Coast, uh, providing uh, jet fuel, uh, providing uh, uh, the shipment of cars from foreign areas. Uh, this is a very important por uh, port. I think it's the 17th uh, largest port uh, or most active port in the country. And so uh, it's good to see the leadership there uh, of Governor Wes Moore and 
uh, the mayor of Baltimore, among a number of federal officials uh, like uh, U.S. Transportation Secretary B P Pete Buttigieg, among others, working together uh, to uh, figure out uh, how to get that port as active as possible while they, while they continue to uh, rebuild. Finally, uh, uh, speaking of uh, uh, activity in Washington, uh, Frost has endorsed uh, also Brooks in Maryland's Senate race. A lot of folks are going to be talking about this Senate race. It'll be one of the most watched in the country, uh, in part because former Maryland Governor uh, Hogan uh, has uh, put his hat in the race, but uh, that's not uh, keeping Representative Maxwell Frost, a Democrat from Florida, from holding back. Uh, just yesterday, he endorsed Prince County's executive, Angela Also Brooks, over fellow Republic, uh, I'm sorry, fellow Representative David Throne, a uh, Democrat of Maryland, in the closely watched Democratic Senate primary in Maryland. Frost, of course, adds to the growing divide among House Democrats who are split in their support for Also Brooks and for Trone ahead of the May primary. Uh, the Hill is reporting that the Democratic nominee will face a tough general election fight against former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, a very popular moderate whose late entry into the race has presented a curveball for Democrats. And so uh, we look forward to potentially having uh, uh uh, also Brooks uh, on this show uh, in the near future before uh, the primary. Uh, and who knows, maybe even uh, former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan uh, as well. Uh, finally, uh, I saw this story, and I, as someone who frequently travels between D.C. and Los Angeles, it uh, definitely caught my attention. A group of House Republicans want to rename Washington Dulles International Airport after guess who? Former President Donald J. Trump. Yeah, Dulles, named for former Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, who served in the Eisenhower administration, is located in Virginia, more than 25 miles west of central Washington, D.C. It's one of three major airports in the D.C. area, alongside uh, Reagan Washington National Airport, also in Virginia, and uh, Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport in Maryland. Uh, this is uh, a uh, bill that uh, is being presented in the House of Representatives. I don't know if it could get through the Senate. I don't know if the president would sign it if it did. Uh, but uh, it uh, has germinated. Uh, we'll see where this goes. Uh, when we come forward, uh, I have two very special guests that are going to be joining me. Uh, they go by the names of Mom and Auntie. Uh, and, uh, you know, for those of you that have been uh, digging around, trying to learn a little bit more about me, dig no further. Uh, I have uh, the sources, some pretty good sources uh, <laughs> of information uh, of, about me and the journey. Uh, this is the afterglow of my uh, 40th birthday celebration uh, just yesterday. Uh, we're going to meet mom. Well, you're going to meet mom and auntie. Uh, when we come forward, you're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come, when we forward, come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. power. Are you wet shaven? You'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops, I'm good with Gillette Skin Guard. How long you been growing that beard? Mama hates anyway. <laughs> Since 77. I shaved and got ingrown so bad. That's why I used the Gillette Skin Guard razor, face scrub, shave gel, and moisturizer. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? Your mama's going to love this one. <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with Gillette Skin Guard. Buy now at a retailer near you. Lowe's knows pros need the right tools for every job. That's why we sell the largest in-store selection of Klein tools anywhere. Find new items like the self-leveling green laser level for just $159.98. Plus, shop the Connect pass-through socket set for $49.98, which you can only find at Lowe's. Shop Klein Tools in-store and online today. Because Lowe's knows tools. Lowe's knows pros. Did you know there is a health care system serving our community whose vision is health for a better world? What if I told you one of our nation's leading health care providers has a department dedicated to health equity and community engagement? 
Providence is Southern California's largest and most comprehensive healthcare network with 11 hospitals and 40 urgent care centers. Providence treats each patient with the compassionate care they deserve when and where they need it. Most importantly, Providence is a diverse family of people and organizations driven by the belief that health is a human right. Providence takes pride in forming community alliances that address health concerns that disproportionately impact those communities. For Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World, informative conversations with Providence health professionals on urban family focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. Get to know more at Providence.org. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. You are listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicole Corte, and I'm joined by my mom and my aunt. My mom, Deborah Corte, my aunt, Lahoma Tabinho, uh, are in town. Uh, this is the day after my uh, 40th birthday. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad you all came down from the Bay Area to spend it with me. Thank you. Thank it's you. a pleasure being here. <laughs> Love to be here. Uh, and so one of the questions that I get often is, have you always been the way that you are? Have you always showed up in the world the way that you have? And uh, I think I have two pretty good sources to let the people know, you know, like, you know, what was I like? Am I pretty much the same as I've always been? What you see is what you get. It really, I'm not just saying it because I'm his mother, but he's a good son. And I got all my sons are good sons, but he goes above and beyond. And he is really a do-gooder. He want to make a difference in this world. And so I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of all the things that he's done and all the things that God got in store for him. It's just amazing. Well, that's very kind of you, very kind of you. But, you know, we want to give people some insights. We want to tell them some stuff maybe they they don't know or would be surprised to know. Um, you know, obviously, when I was very young, my aunt, uh, you know, came from Florida to California to help take care of me. Uh, as a little kid, uh, always very curious and active. Uh, how are you remembering me as I'm turning 40? Well, right. How are you remembering the, the arc of all of this? Okay, Niku. Um, when you was born, I knew that day that, um, you know, you was going to be the greatest person that you are. And when you started um, junior high, you know, the, with the Angel Network campaign, with the Oprah Winfrey show. Mm -hmm. And when you walked on that stage with your green suit. <laughs> that was a J.C. Penny <laughs> suit. Anybody go on to YouTube, if you look at that clip of when I was on Oprah in the, in the, in the seventh grade, that was a J.C. Penny Easter special. It was. Right? And, I, <laughs> and I was told, you're going to grow into it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so if it's looking a little bit big on Oprah, it's because, you know, y'all understand. I know. And then to look at that big smile on your beloved father's face. Yeah. He was so happy mm -hmm. to see you there in the presence of that opportunity to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. And when you walked on that stage and she waved her hands and she gave you a high five and said, you're going places, my brother. Yes. I knew that time that you were going places. Mm -hmm. And look at you now. It, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 right. I mean, OK, you know, touched by an Oprah. Yes. Um, uh, that was that was really great. Um, so you all know a whole lot more than our audience knows. Uh, I've been really busy over the course of the past year mm -hmm. writing a book. Yes. Um, and, you know, we will share more about that uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months. And so to our leaders, learners and listeners, don't you worry. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the the fun parts of this book was being able to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, have you seen these pictures? Yes. You know, or, 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 hey, you know, run this story by me one more time. I want to make sure sure I get this right. Uh, you know, you met dad in college in yes. Texas, right? Mm -hmm. You all grew up in Ocean Apart. Uh, you in, in Florida, dad in Ghana. Uh, and there are some stories uh, that I have in the book uh, mm -hmm. that underscore that. Uh, but, you know, Talk to us a little bit about my origin story, which is you meeting dad in Texas. Yes, I, I met your dad in 
uh, August 1971 in Tyler, Texas. We went to a school called Texas College. And he was sitting out checking all the young girls. And I happened to get off this bus. With all his Kappa swag. Uh-huh. And I happened <laughs> to get off this bus. And uh, he said, what's your name? And I go, Deborah, Quartet, uh, Deborah Thomas. Mm -hmm. And soon I uh, went to my dormitory. And like five days later, I was on my way going to the cafeteria past the bookstore. And he say, I come over to talk to you and you never come out. And I say, what name are you using? He say, Brenda Thomas. I say, my name is Deborah Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how we met. That's how they met, that's how they met. And you know, what was that like, uh, you know, being with somebody who grew up in a completely different part of the world, who's black, but has a different heritage than you, right? I mean, I would imagine, you know, there was a lot of cross-sharing about what life was like for him in Ghana and what mm -hmm. life was like for you growing up near the height of the civil rights movement in Florida. But you know something, when I was in high school, I was a senior in high school, we had to do some type of essay. And my essay was about traveling one day to Africa. Really? I was very intrigued about that. And so when I stepped foot off that bus and met your father, I go, it must have been destined. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, I never knew that story. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and let's talk about names, right? And so, you know, you, you say that dad uh, thought your name was Brenda. Yes. <laughs> and not Deborah. Uh, uh, and that, that was a part of uh, the gap in communication between the two of you when you first met. Mm -hmm. You know, and so one of the most frequently asked questions I get is about my name, right? And yes, we all have African names, all my brothers, right? But uh, I'm the only one without a Christian first name. You are. And, and people are oftentimes tickled by this because they say, okay, well, wait a minute. Your parents are Joseph and Deborah, and your brothers are David, James, John, and Joseph. Really, the right? Bible. <laughs> right? Uh, and so, you know, what is the story? What's your story on the record? The story is uh, my husband had a relative named uh, Nick Quartelai Quarte, and in his... Uh, he, he was a professional boxer, Ike Quarte. A lot of people might know Ike Quarte. Uh -huh. Your father named you after that person, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I mean, if Ike is listening. <laughs> you, Ike is listening. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, Ike Quarte. It's a great thing. It wasn't unfortunate. It wasn't no, unfortunate. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I, mean I, I guess I, the, I was born to be a fighter. Maybe, right? yeah, yeah. Born to be a fighter in yeah. some ways, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, what are some of the 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 memories that that you remember? What's the what's the one thing that you have uh, seen develop in me over the years that you think people may not understand or folks may, might miss? Well, um, you always tell you you walk with grace. You have that dignity, that uh, incorrect, uh, incorrectity uh, about yourself. And um, you show people that, um, you know, you show love mm -hmm. and compassion mm -hmm. to everyone. That's true. Uh, you're trustworthy. And um, like I said, as you're growing up and to the man you are today, mm -hmm. um, it's... It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You have excelled to greatness, and you're still going on your journey. And can I say something? Of course. I'm not putting you on a pedestal. No, you're not. You know, because, <laughs> you know, God is first in my life and, and next my family. Yeah. But you are, like I say, you are exceptional. With all my children, you stood out the most. You know, and you have proven that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. Well, I appreciate that, Mom. I appreciate yeah. that. Heavy is the crown. Um, you know, I, I also can't let you all go without giving you a, a chance to dish about me uh, a little bit. And so, uh, you know, you all said very glowing things, yes. you know. Uh, but, you know, 
what are some of the less glowing things? There, there, there's there's got to be something, you know, about me that's a little annoying. <laughs> um, you're very talkative. <laughs> that I do know. Just like his dad was. Yes, mm-hmm. your dad was very talkative. Yes. A little talkative. Mm-hmm. I can't really say anything that's... Are you, are you, you probably say I'm pr- pretty persistent. You are persistent. I don't let up. Oh, can I say one thing? You okay. do not. <laughs> can I say go one ahead, thing? Go it's, ahead. it's not a bad thing. No, go ahead. Because your dad has some of those qualities. Yeah. Sometimes you are a um, procrastinator. Okay, that's true. You do. That's true. And your dad does the same thing. Uh-huh. And a lot of times I see these qualities in you uh-huh. from your father. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's true. It's true. I own it. Procrastinating, it used to really bother me with your dad. Uh It's just like, come on, get with it. Yeah. And you does that sometimes. But mom is also a big planner, right? And so if you if the flight is leaving at four o'clock, that's right. At one o'clock, she's like, "Are you ready?" Uh huh. (laughs) Yes. It's better to be on time than be late. That is so true. That's Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Well, I'm so glad that you all came down to L.A. to spend my 40th, to ring in my 40th. Thank you. Yes. We enjoyed it. And uh, later this year, uh, when I'm on my book tour, uh, to all of our leaders, learners, and listeners, uh, you might get a chance to meet my mom and I. I'll be there. I'll be there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. My thanks to my Aunt Lahoma Tabinho and my mom, Deborah Corte. Thank you, sweetheart. uh, For making their debut on A More Perfect Union. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. A safe place to go loud. 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 A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott unveiled a $4.1 billion budget for fiscal year 2025, with $3.4 billion for operating expenses and $654 million for capital investments. The budget focuses on education, violence prevention, and addressing vacant properties while closing a budget gap by cutting vacant city positions. Mayor Scott, who is black, is monitoring the Key Bridge collapse's potential impact on the city's finances. Subway crime in New York City is down. There was a big spike in subway crime in January, but it went down in February. And now Mayor Eric Adams, who was black, says there's a 24% drop in subway crime for March. The state and city made a number of moves to try and address subway safety over the last couple of months, including adding law enforcement personnel in the system. The NYPD just deployed 800 additional officers to go after fare beaters who officials say are often the ones committing subway crimes. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Turn your tax refund into a new ride at Nissan of Mission Hills in Gardena Nissan. Find a huge selection with over 1,000 vehicles in stock. Lease a new 2023 Rogue SV at $195 a month. Plus, lifetime oil changes on any new Nissan purchased there. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Despite Monday night's loss to UConn in the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, the future is very bright for the USC program. ESPN.com ranks USC number one among the nation's recruiting classes coming in for next season. Three of the players signed by USC coach Lindsey Gottlieb are playing in tonight's McDonald's High School All-American game in Houston, including Kennedy Smith of Rancho Cucamonga. Smith was the number one recruit in California. The other two All-Americans are Avery Howell of Boise, Idaho, and Kaylee Heckle of Long Island, New York. It looks like USC will have a lot more talent next season to put around All-American Juju Watkins. The Dodgers are at home tonight against San Francisco. The Angels are at Miami. The Angels are 2-2 two and two in their first season with manager Ron Washington. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Environmental justice is racial justice. Environmental justice is social justice. This is KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. about. Race, culture wars, political turf battles, criminal justice and injustice, the courts. These are the conversations you won't hear elsewhere. My guests are leading journalists, celebrities, and sports figures, elected leaders, and influencers. They aren't afraid to get into it and say the quiet part out loud. 
With Ariba Martin in real time, your commute just became the most engaging part of your day. Tune in weekdays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. or find us on YouTube. Ariva Martin in real time when you want it straight, no chaser. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 151880. We've got your black. black. Heard the catchphrase that's sweeping the nation? Jackson, Hugh, yeah. People are saying Jackson Hugh, yeah to Jackson Hewitt because they love saving money on tax prep. Do you love saving money? Then switch to Jackson Hewitt today and pay less than last year. Thousands of people have already made the switch. Why haven't you? Stop waiting and start filing. You won't get a better deal or a better catchphrase. All together now. Jackson Hugh, yeah! Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Hey, I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness, freshness. from my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. There's only a few days left for open enrollment starting at $0 a month. LA Care Covered offers the benefits you need to achieve your health goals. $0 preventive services, 24-7 virtual care and nurse advice lines, walk-in minute clinics, free fitness and nutrition classes, and more. Become a member of LA's most affordable health plan. Get a free instant quote at lacarecovered.org. Have open enrollment questions? Connect with us today at 855-222-4239. Find your affordable path to wellness with LA care covered today <coughs> oh this cold honey <laughs> honey honey you need dayquil severe honey dayquil severe honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey licious taste because life doesn't stop for a cold okay i'm ready to go <coughs> <coughs> now i'm getting a cold honey try dayquil severe honey for powerful cold and flu relief dayquil severe with honey flavor the daytime coughing aching stuffy head fever honey licious power through your day medicine use as directed keep out of reach of children Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Epic. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. Hello, Joe, you're up. Welcome. We're unapologetically progressive, and we don't black down. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nick Cordelai Corte, and uh, it's a family fair today. Hope you all enjoyed uh, listening to Mom and Auntie, who are visiting from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, always uh, nice to introduce folks that uh have been day ones i mean literally you know i don't i don't think it gets any more day one than your mom <laughs> and your aunt uh and so i hope you all enjoyed that be sure to subscribe to a more perfect union podcast and remember you can always 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 uh catch episodes that you might not catch live uh but uh digging a little bit deeper into the headlines today surprise surprise you'll need more than a hundred thousand dollars in income to afford a typical home this ain't this ain't uh you know uh a beverly hills home necessarily this is just a typical home that's what studies are showing um you've heard that it's a tough time to buy a house but exactly mm, how tough is it a pair of recent studies predicts that you need to earn more than a hundred thousand dollars per year to comfortably afford a typical home in much of the U.S. right now. That's a major jump from just four years ago, and it comes at a time when fewer homes are on the market and mortgage rates and housing prices have been high. House hunters, meanwhile, haven't seen their wages increase at the same pace. Uh, Now, let's talk about this six-figure threshold. A Zillow analysis released in February found that Prospective homeowners would have to earn more than $106,000 annually to be able to buy a typical home in the U.S. That's an 80% increase 
from the $59,000 yearly income the website predicted a household would need to comfortably afford a home in 2020. So really, uh, in almost four years, we've seen the amount of money you need to afford a typical house almost double, right? And so I shudder at the idea of what the number might be another four years from now. In a separate study released on Monday, the financial website Bank Rate suggested Americans would have to rake in 110000 per year to afford a median priced home, which the outlet says cost a little over $400,000. That income level surged nearly 50% from its 2020 estimate. And so you hear people say location, location, location. Of course, those figures are based on national data, and home prices vary depending on where you want to live. Bankrate found that aspiring homeowners in 22 states and Washington, D.C. should earn at least $100,000 per year to afford a typical home. Buyers in the South and Midwest require less to pay for a new dig than uh, those in the West and Northeast. Uh, uh, and so, you know, if you're looking to buy and you live in L.A., you know, maybe it's not L.A., you know, maybe you, you buy in some other state if you can um, to just sort of, you know, get in the market. And as as uh, a lot of financial advisors say, diversify your portfolio, you know, diversifying your portfolio by owning real estate. It may not always be, you know, where you want to live full time or where your job is full time. Um, still, the 22 states requiring a six figure income is an increase from the only six states in D.C., where that much money would have been necessary to buy a typical house in 2020. And so, you know, this is not really uh, that big of a headline. Um, it's just, it's a reminder that housing affordability is a major issue. It's not just an L.A. issue. It's a U.S. issue. Uh, and, you know, between this and the cost of college, my goodness, you know, we've got to get really creative about how we're going to address this. And speaking of college, the Associated, Associated Press is reporting that college will cost up to $95,000 this fall. Schools say it's okay. Financial aid can numb the sticker shock. Can it really, though? As more than 2 million graduating high school students from across the U.S. finalize their decisions on what colleges to attend this fall, many are facing jaw-dropping costs. In some cases, as much as $95,000. A number of private colleges, some considered elite and other middle of the pack, have exceeded the $90,000 threshold for the first time this year as they set their annual costs for tuition, board, meals, and other expenses. That means that a wealthy family with three children could expect to shell out more than a million dollars by the time their youngest child completes a four-year degree. Y'all know that ain't sustainable. Uh, even though some say that the sticker price tells only one part of the story. Many colleges with large endowments have become more focused in recent years on making college affordable for students who aren't wealthy. Lower-income families may be required to pay just 10% of the advertised rate. Uh, for some, attending a selective private college can turn out to be cheaper than state tuition. And so, you know, that's important to note. Um, and, you know, we know that we're in April right now, and I think the beginning of May is when folks have to sort of make their decisions and send their commitment letters. But, you know, this is, you know, important. This is an important period of time where a lot of families are having conversations with their uh, colleges of choice uh, about what exactly the financial aid package looks like. Um, and, um, it's important to turn over every single stone uh, before folks make that final decision. Um, you know, going to college uh, d should not mean having to go into tens of thousands of dollars of debt in order to do that. That is just not sustainable. Uh, and the colleges know it. Uh, you know, I often wonder, uh, you know, are they raising their prices to cover their costs or are they raising their prices to compete with other top tier universities? In other words, you know, if Harvard 
or Cornell or Columbia, uh, for example, you know, if the cost of uh, attendance is 90 some odd thousand dollars, you know, and you are a, you know, middle tier college aspiring to be a top tier college or at least perceived that way. You know, do you jack up the price just so it looks like you're in the same league? I just think that there's, from a consumer protection standpoint, there's so much more that, that we should be paying attention to. We saw some efforts during the Obama administration to sort of dig into that. I think at one point there was a proposal out there around, you know, some sort of, um, uh, you know, college affordability index that looked at a number of factors, including, you know, uh, the likelihood um, and the time it took for graduates, recent college grads to get a job and, you know, what the average income was, you know, very school by school to really sort of unpack the value of of degrees in the marketplace. And so and I think it's clear we got to do something different. And, you know, whether you're talking about housing affordability or college affordability, uh, I really think that uh, it really opens the door for a conversation around universal basic income. You know, um, if, you know, folks' wages cannot keep pace with inflation, if it can't keep pace with, you know, the rising cost of housing and education, uh, then, you know, that might be something we want to look at. And there are plenty of uh, mayors across the country that are experimenting with pilot programs. Uh, around universal basic income. And in the near future, we look to have uh, Michael Tubbs uh, um, uh, and maybe even Andrew Yang. Uh, these are political leaders who were really on the cutting edge of you know, really fostering a national conversation around universal basic income. So we uh, look forward to having them and other experts on to uh, help us uh, uh, look a little bit more closely at uh, the promise uh, of universal basic income when it comes to uh, these really significant challenges that aren't going away uh, for everyday Americans, our fellow Americans, our family members, our neighbors. Uh, and so with that, uh, when we come forward, it's time for the quiet part out loud. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with ZQuil nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use is directed, keep out of reach of children. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's the farewell tour. It's Maze featuring Frankie Beverly. 
Sing for the Lord, please. Sing to me that joy. Also featuring the soul icon, Anthony Hamilton. Plus, after 7, it's a Mother's Day celebration, May 12th in the Kia Forum. In commemoration, coming your all white. Get tickets at Ticketmaster. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. We know you stick around. This is LA's home for progressive talk radio. Be heard. Welcome back to KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. It's about that time. Time for the quiet part out loud. The Hill is reporting that uh, McConnell said that the federal government will pay the lion's share of Baltimore's bridge repairs. That's right. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky says the federal government will pay the lion's share of the cost of repairing Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, which collapsed last week after being struck by a cargo ship. Now, experts estimate that it would cost between $400 million and $2 billion to repair the bridge, which spanned the outer Baltimore Harbor. Uh, linking Hawkins Point with uh, Baltimore and Dundalk, Maryland, and providing a hazmat route for trucks prohibited from uh, driving through the area's chan- the area's tunnels. Uh, McConnell said on Monday that it's the responsibility of the federal government to cover the cost of repairs, even though some Republicans have questioned whether the rest of the country needs to chip in and pay for the cleanup. McConnell's comments came after Representative uh, Dan Moyser, a Republican of uh, Pennsylvania, called the idea of the uh, federal government stepping in to pay for the disaster, quote, outrageous. It was kind of outrageous immediately for President Biden to express In this tragedy, the idea that he's going to use federal funds to pay for the entirety. That's what uh, Muser, Moiser, told Fox Business. He went on to say that, you know, he doesn't refer to it as the American taxpayer dollars on anything. You know, the first reaction, in fact, was the only reaction it tends to be to spin. Biden plans to travel to Baltimore on Friday to survey the damage. And, you know, a substantial portion of the cost of rebuilding the project could come from the Federal Highway Trust Fund and the one trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure investment law that Congress passed in 2021. But Congress may have to approve additional funding for the complicated and expensive project. The uh, down down bridge has disrupted traffic to one of the busiest ports in the nation, which handled more than 50 million tons of foreign cargo, including more than 750,000 cars and trucks in 2023. Let me tell you why I think this is important, why this was worth sharing. It is a norm that's been set across administrations, both Republican administrations and Democratic administrations, where when there are disasters that happen, the federal government kicks in. The the federal government does their part. The federal government uh, makes resources, federal resources available uh, to provide support and aid to states. That's how we do it. Uh, And the comments by uh, Representative, Representative Dan Muser, Republican of Pennsylvania, calling the federal government stepping in to pay for the disaster outrageous, I view that as an attack on that norm. And this is something that we've got to pay attention to. Um, There's a lot of politics that uh, are played when it comes to providing federal aid in this country when there's a disaster. You know, we saw hints of it uh, during the Maui fires. Um, We certainly saw it uh, related to Hurricane Katrina. Uh, and we've got to be careful, particularly in election years, uh, how some folks may want to um, decide to politicize these disasters and politicize the federal government's role of providing aid where it is needed. Wasn't it Abraham Lincoln, a Republican president, that believed that the government should do for the people what they cannot do for themselves and no more? Well, I don't think the people themselves can go out and swim in the harbor and uh, remove this wreckage and rebuild it with their bare hands. 
there's a very appropriate role for government in uh, the rebuild of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And uh, this is an important moment, seeing that the Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, uh, actually stood uh, stood up stood up for this norm stood up to protect this norm he didn't normalize the crazy he normalized the role that the federal government has played in disasters for a long time that's worth noting that's the quiet part out loud. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. On your period, sudden gushes happen without warning. But now you can say goodbye to stand-up gush fears. Thanks to Always Ultra Thins with Rapid Dry Technology. It absorbs gushes two times faster than the leading store brand and gives you up to 100% leak-free protection. Hello, clean and comfortable with always Fear No Gush. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low and you are 65 or older or an adult or child with a disability or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced by Social Security at U.S. taxpayer expense. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles is a nonprofit law firm that protects and advances the rights of the most underserved, leveling the playing field and ensuring that everyone can have access to the justice system. Every year, LAFLA provides free, high-quality legal services to more than 100,000 people living in poverty across greater Los Angeles. Their unique combination of neighborhood offices, self-help centers at courthouses, and domestic violence clinics puts Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles on the front lines in vulnerable communities and at the forefront of change. LAFLA's expert team of attorneys, paralegals, and support staff works to provide direct representation, offer counsel and advice, provide referrals, and educate the community about their legal rights through workshops and seminars. With locations all over LA, you can access their services or volunteer to help no matter where you live. And if you have an urgent issue, call 213-235-0060. That's 213-235-0060. To get legal help, make a donation or volunteer, visit LAFLA.org. LAFLA.org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? We didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte. Let me finish with this. Uh, Variety is reporting that uh, John Stewart says that Apple wouldn't let us do an anti-AI segment and asked us not to have Federal Trade Commission chair as a guest what is that sensitivity? That's right. John Stewart made headlines in February when he appeared on CBS Mornings ahead of his return to hosting Comedy Central's The Daily Show and said that Apple, Apple canceled his previous talk show. The problem with John Stewart because, quotes, they didn't want me to say things that might get me in trouble. On the April 1st episode of The Daily Show, Stewart went into greater detail about Apple's concerns over the direction of his now-axed talk show and corresponding podcast. Stewart was interviewing Federal Trade Commissioner Chair Lena Khan on The Daily Show and told her that he once pitched to have her as a guest on The Problem podcast. Considering Khan's work at the FTC targets tech giants, monopolistic uh, practices. Apple allegedly did not want Stewart bringing her on the program to presumably talk about such topics. Stewart went one step further and said that Apple didn't even 
want him talking about the perils of AI on his podcast. He said, quotes, they wouldn't let us do even that dumb thing we just did in the first act on AI, referring to a near 15 minute segment Stewart did earlier in the show in which he criticized the rise of AI and spoke about how it's making human workers obsolete. Like, what's that sensitivity? Stewart asked about Apple. Well, why are they so afraid to even have these conversations out in the public sphere? He went on to say, I think it shows the danger of what happens when you concentrate so much power and so much decision making in a small number of companies. Variety, of course, reached out to Apple's representatives for a uh, comment. Uh, and uh, uh, not sure if, uh, if they heard back. Uh, while an individual with knowledge of the situation said at the time that Stewart and Apple, their split was amicable. That's what the New York Times reported. Um, they also reported that the duo had disagreements over topics that were being covered in the third season, including AI and China. Members of the U.S. House of Representatives later questioned Apple CEO Tim Cook about whether the tech giant's decision to cancel Stewart's show was because the host may have been planning an upcoming upcoming episode about China. Stewart hosts the uh, new episodes of The Daily Show on Monday nights on Comedy Central. Uh, this is a cautionary tale right here. You know, uh, whenever folks are sort of breaking that firewall between leadership and editorial, you know, beware. Um, and so uh, let's let's all lean into this as a uh, cautionary tale uh, that uh, uh, we are watchful of. We'll have to leave it there. My thanks to the entire village helps us to produce a more perfect union each and every day. Our uh, executive producer, Tavis Smiley, our sound engineer extraordinaire, Miles Lowe, sporting the plaid today. Uh, also, our uh, show producer, Robert Battles, uh, our podcast publishing guru, Odell Bodie, and of course, it was really special having mom and auntie join me for this very special post 40th birthday episode of A More Perfect Union. Remember, don't panic, organize. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte, and you've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580.